think when it comes to the COVID response in Bangladesh, I want to in particular note uh, FAO. FAO really stepped forward uh, from that angle of One Health. I, as a resident coordinator, am much more aware of this initiative. I'm much more aware of its potential. Uh, and I'm certainly much more aware of its importance when it comes to pandemic preparedness. The resident coordinator at the time, Mia Seipo, was absolutely fantastic in managing this response overall. Under her leadership, I think she gave really clear mandates. So we had already had the experience of working uh, from sector to sector on how to deal with potential outbreaks of disease. And this had a lot of uh, impact for putting together strategies for addressing the, the COVID-19 pandemic. I guess the big picture about our work in One Health and what we can contribute from the FAO side is recognizing that the work that we actively do every day in the animal health sector is reducing the risk of the next pandemic. And that's something that's often forgotten. We have essentially had a pandemic of avian influenza going on since, in what now, over 15 years. Um, the types of pathogens we're dealing with are the same, be it in animals or humans. All of the equipment we use are the same. So actually it's that biosafety capacity that we've been working on with these zoonotic diseases that we were able to immediately bring to bear on the response on COVID. So it was a natural extension for us to be able to then apply those tools to working with COVID-19. The community support teams in the end had a massive impact, covering over two million households, and helping them understand, basically through health extension services, the challenges of COVID-19. I guess the best part was that, that we work with the young people out there, the volunteers, who are from different civil society organizations. I can recall we just uh, trained 1,400 volunteers within nine days. It was IEDCR who helped to train those people. They came to IDCR and IDCR people trained them how to collect the sample, how to do the rapid testing. And IDCR also provided the medical technologists who were always with the CSTs under their supervision. Actually, CST uh, did this work at field level. The CSTs were able to validate um, the use of the rapid test at household level with support from IDCR, so able to show that we can actually bring diagnostic services into these communities and that people who even aren't medical doctors, but they're able to actually still perform that test reliably. At that time, number of sample collection was um, enormously increased. We could collect uh, more than 180 samples per day from the people who were living in the slum area. Then the next thing to help us is the CST mobile app, like digitalization of the surveillance system itself. So CST had their mobile with their surveillance uh, app. They just need to fill up and we grab the data. It's like live streaming of the data from the field. So we were able to quickly always make changes to the CST app, deploy that very quickly as uh, new needs arose in the field. And later also include vaccination registration. When we were dealing with avian influenza, we always found that there was this bias or this blind spot, particularly for the very poor, marginalized communities. They were never being included in the surveillance systems. They weren't, weren't perceived to be important. But yet wherever we go uh, in providing those tools, they always find that these communities have been affected by the disease. So that reminds us of always to try to shine a light in the areas that are in the shadow. That's how we you know, bring about better disease control. And what was really interesting from the COVID work is that that was the same thing that the CST work found. That it wasn't that the disease had somehow bypassed the slums of Dhaka. It had moved through the slums of Dhaka even faster than other parts of the city, probably because of the higher densities and the higher contact rates. But no one noticed. And that was also confirmed from the research as well. You know, the disease actually moved through here first, um, but no one would have known unless we actually went out of our way and provided support to bring health services uh, to these communities. Initially, I know that those volunteers, when they work in the field, they got this res resistance from the people. 
কারণ এই সময় কেউ কারো কাছে যেত যে যেতেও ভয় পেত বা কেউ কাউকে এরকম ট্রাস্ট করত না তখন কোন অনুভূতি কথা মনে করলে তো গাছে উঠে এর জন্যই বললাম যে আত্মীয় স্বজন তখন দূরে চলে যায় কেউ আসে নাই আমি তো সবাই রে ইনফর্ম করছি যে আমাদের শরীর অসুস্থ আমার হাজবেন্ড এই অবস্থা হইতেছে অন্ত কেউ আসে নাই সবাই বলছে না এটা তো কারোর সামনে কেউ যাওয়া যাবে না so that you know approach of building community trust is so essential to be able to actually have an effective uh, community based response আসছে সিএসসি টিম যখন আসছে তখন ওর যে এলাকা যেহেতু ওরে দেখে আমি people who might otherwise not have been reached. I think ultimately that's why we say Shobai by Bon. You know, this has been our uh, strategy from the very first day. We're all brothers and sisters. And if we have communities working hand in hand with our public health authorities, then everyone wins and no one is left behind.